Welcome to the West Coast Railway's Jacobite Steam Train, or how you might know it, the Hogwarts Express. And if you're not a Harry Potter nerd like me, the Hogwarts Express is the train that takes Harry Potter and all of his wizard friends from Platform 9 and 3 quarters in King's Cross Station in London all the way to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Well, I don't think this train will end up taking us to the famed School of Wizards. It will, however, take us through an 84-mile journey past Scotland's epic landscapes. The Jacobite is a historic steam locomotive that originally started in 1901 by the Northern British Railways, largely to support the economic and population growth of this once remote portion of Scotland. The train ran until 1967 when, as part of the British Railways modernization plan, the locomotives were replaced by more efficient and reliable diesel engines. In 1984 though, Jacobite steam engines were reintroduced to encourage tourism in the area, and with the train being used as the Hogwarts Express in the Harry Potter movies starting in the early 2000s, the popularity of this train line exploded. So much so that its operator, West Coast Railways, added a second daily train to keep up with the demand in 2011. While many travelers, including us, flock to the Jacobite due to its Hogwarts Express connection, it's important to note that you won't be running the exact same engine and train that whisked Harry, Ron, and Hermione off to Hogwarts in the film, which was provided to Warner Brothers by the train's operator. However, you'll be running the exact same style of locomotive and carriages as the Hogwarts Express, and will pass through some of the most iconic scenes from the film. This is our first class seat. This comes with a private table for two, or you can get it in configurations of four. This is the only class that you can get tea service with, and it looks like we also get a cute little shortbread cookie and our own personal lamp. Take a seat, please. That's lovely, thank you. The Jacobite steam train runs from Fort Williams to the small fishing town of Malay, along the country's western Atlantic coastline, and then back to Fort Williams. All in, the journey will take about six hours. The train will end up dropping you back off where you started. Along the way, we're hoping to see some of Scotland's best scenery and maybe a little bit of magic. During the train ride, the Jacobite passes some of the United Kingdom's most impressive landmarks, including Ben Nevis, the tallest mountain in Britain, the westernmost railway station in Britain, Loch Moher, the deepest freshwater lock in Britain, and Loch Nevis, the deepest seawater lock in all of Europe. And beyond just its impressive list of superlatives, the Jacobite is often described as one of the most scenic train rides in the world, offering stunning views of the rolling green mountains, locks, and Atlantic coastline of the Scottish Highlands. Running from April through October, this train has two services that leave each day. One that leaves at 10.30 in the morning, and another at 2.30 in the afternoon. We chose the morning service because we're headed to the Isle of Skye this afternoon. The only other thing I'd known about booking your tickets is to do it way ahead of time. We booked our tickets almost six months ago and just afterwards they were already all sold out. There's three different types of tickets that you can book. The most affordable option is standard which is 57 pounds per person. These come with a refurbished vintage seats that are in a configuration of four per table. That means that if you're traveling solo or in a couple you're gonna wind up sitting with strangers. The second option of tickets is first class which is what we opted for. With this option you get either a table with a fancy lamp and and seats in either a two or four configuration. For a table of two, it costs 199 pounds. This is also the only service that comes with tea and coffee, and you have the option to purchase an additional high tea in the afternoon, which we opted for, and I very excited about. The last option that you have is a compartment carriage, and that's probably what you've seen in the Harry Potter movies. They sit up to six. On this train, they cost 395 pounds per compartment. I would have preferred, honestly, to sit in the compartment carriage because of the Harry Potter vibes, but it, because it's 395 pounds per compartment, it would be almost 100 more per person, so instead we opted for the first class. Oh, I'm Harry Potter. If you do plan on booking a compartment carriage, just be aware that it's only available on the morning train service. I always see people doing tour videos in bathrooms, so here we are. I'll show you around the Jacob Eddy Christmas bathroom. We got a pretty standard toilet, toilet paper, paper towel roll, trash, a pistol sink. We got Seek Help moisturizer and hand wash. And overall, it smells pretty good. As we mentioned, the first class tickets are the only ones that come with coffee and tea service. However, there's a buffet carriage that all passengers can go to to buy coffee or tea. There's also some optional add-ons like champagne, chocolate, or flowers. 
first we were a little sad because all of the good views were out from that side, but we just found out that on the return leg back to the station, we're going to be switching cars and we're going to be sitting on that side of the train. The Glenfinnan Viaduct is inarguably the most iconic Hogwarts Express filming location, being featured in four of the Harry Potter films. The structure was constructed in 1898, and it's still the longest concrete railway bridge in Scotland at 380 meters long. The viaduct and its 21 arches are now pretty famous throughout Scotland, appearing on some Scottish banknotes and in a variety of other TV shows and movies other than Harry Potter, including the beloved show, The Crown. There's a 20-minute stop at Glenfinnan. There's supposed to be a little history museum about steam trains and maybe even a Quidditch broom, so let's go check it out. It's a Harry Potter pun, Dumbledore. The only places the train will actually stop to let you off is at Glenfinnan and Malig. But the train does make brief stops at Arseg, and I've read that you can actually request to get off here if you need to. On the return journey, we actually crossed paths with the afternoon service of the Jacobite here, and it was pretty cool to see another Jacobite so up close and personal. We are currently stopped at the Arseg train station, which is the westernmost train station in all of Scotland. After about two hours, we arrived in the small fishing village of Malig. Originally found in the 1840s, the town now offers a bustling harbor with views of the Isle of Skye, a handful of cute restaurants that are waiting to feed hungry train passengers, and souvenir shops with lots of Harry Potter gear. The train stops for 90 minutes in Malig, and right now we are enjoying some lunch. After we ate lunch at the cabin restaurant, we wandered over to the harbor and found out that there are daily one-hour wildlife cruises that leave from the harbor, specifically timed for the train riders, where you can see seabirds, seals, porpoises, dolphins, whales, and basking sharks. While we very much enjoyed our meal in Malik, if I were to do this experience again, I probably would have skipped getting food in town and instead went on a wildlife cruise and enjoyed our high tea back on the train for lunch. Oh, we're taking off. Luckily, we got some high tea. One of the coolest things about high tea on the train is that it's super friendly to an array of dietary preferences, including vegetarian, vegan, and gluten-free. We spent the return ride enjoying some of our high tea and the stunning views out the window. We loved our time on the Jacobite steam train, and given how big of a fan I am of Harry Potter, this was definitely a bucket list experience for me. That being said, if you're looking for a cheaper option to enjoy the Scottish Highland scenery, you can just book a normal train from Fort Williams to Malague for about half the price of even the cheapest option on the Jacobite. It just might be a wee bit less magical. Well, that is it for our time on the Jacobite Express. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to keep seeing cool experiences like this, please subscribe. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. What do you think of our Jacobite Express? Magical. The Glenfinnan Viaduct is inarguably the most iconic Hogwarts Express. Hog. Hogwarts Express. <laughs> I hope they don't sue us for that.